eight seeking fame uh, we've done uh, so two chapters um, desiring praise desiring compliments uh, seeking fame so they're all very uh, similar um, seeking fame the definition uh, again definition ayat karima hadith park and a story uh, and uh, the cures uh, so six causes and cures for desiring fame six causes and so uh, first the definition definition of desiring fame desiring fame means attempting to become popular i.e. behaving in a way that makes you uh, famous Allah Almighty declares in the glorious Quran وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ رِئَاءَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَنْ يَكُنِ الشَّيْطَانُ لَهُ قَدِينًا فَسَاءَ قَدِينًا and those who spend their wealth to show off to the people and do not believe in Allah or the last day. And whoever has the devil as his companion, i.e. advisor, so what an evil companion he is. So this ayat karima well in fact let's uh, listen to the tafsir, let's read the tafsir. Sadr al-Afadil, Allama Mawlana Muhammad Sayyid Muhammad Laib al-Din Murada Badi Rahmatullahi. He explains this blessed verse in his tafsir Khaza'in al-Irfan. After stinginess, Bukhl, uh, the Holy Quran now condemns extravagant spending. Uh, this judgment includes people who spend money to gain popularity, okay? fame and recognition, rather than spending for the pleasure of Allah Almighty, such as polytheists and hypocrites. So spending uh, extravagantly, uh, that spending in haram, and also spending money to become popular, uh, not to seek the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. This has been condemned in the Holy uh, Quran. And then the, the Holy, the Ayat al that we've read, just read uh, mentions being the companion of the devil. So explaining the words, whoever has Satan as a companion, the eminent Mufti writes, in this world and the next, the Satan, the Shaitan being your companion on this earth refers to pleasing him as a result of obeying him. And in the next world, every infidel will be tied to a Satan with a chain of fire. Um, so the people who are spending uh, for fame, not spending for the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala inside this dunya, they are the companions of the devil. So blessed hadith about seeking fame, humiliation for a fame seeker. The glorious Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned, if any individual acts in order to become famous, then Allah Almighty will humiliate him. If anybody acts in order to show off, then on Judgment Day, Allah Almighty will expose his flaws in front of mankind. Okay. And we already know, we've studied before that doing ibadat uh, to become famous or just so that people call us naik and pious, that's haram, it's showing off. Okay. And it's haram. Um, but like you said, that if someone prays in namaz, he does it to show off. So the namaz, the furs will be fulfilled, but he won't get any sawab for it. But uh, well, he shouldn't then think uh, that look, if I'm showing off and I'm not sincere in my ibadat, why do it in the first place? Well, you've got to do a furs regardless of whether your intention is good or bad. If uh, someone's intention is wrong and he abstains from paying namaz or doing any other furs due to him feeling that his intentions are correct, well, now he's not just committed the, uh, he, he's totally abandoned. Uh, faris. So at least do the faris so that that faris is lifted from you, that faris action, and it's not kaza on you, that you know you don't fall into the uh, the category of disobedient people, i.e. those who've missed it anymore. So you can't miss a faris just because you feel that your intention is not fully there. You have to still do it and keep on doing istighfar. The ruling on desiring fame, desiring fame is tremendously despicable and detested. Obsessing over fame often causes people to commit numerous sins, hence why every Muslim must abstain from it. Imam Ghazali Rahmatullahi clarifies, desiring fame is strongly despised, only anonymity in being unknown, anonymity is praiseworthy. However, it is a different matter if without making personal struggles to acquire fame and publicity, Allah Almighty makes you famous solely as a result of your services in the domain of religious propagation. Such fame and publicity is not condemned. So if you don't want to be famous, we shouldn't have the desire to be, the greed to be famous. But Allah gives you fame, Allah Park makes you known amongst the people. That's his fuzzle, 
that's his uh, blessing, but we shouldn't have the desire to be uh, famous. When is fame and publicity not condemned? The following is Imam Ghazali's uh, response to a question that he was posed with. Uh, you should know that condemnable fame is that which is uh, craved, coveted. On the contrary, fame that you receive without desiring it, solely due to the benevolence of Allah Almighty, is not disliked at all. Nevertheless, for weak personalities, fame is a test. Okay. Here's an example. Uh, so fame is a test for weak personalities. Let me explain. Let's assume that a few people are drowning. One of them can swim, but he is weak. Hence, it is better for his swimming ability to remain unknown to the other people. Otherwise, if everyone knows that he, he can swim, they'll all cling on to him. But because he's weak, they'll cause him to become even weaker, which will result in everyone drowning. They'll drown and he'll drown as well. However, if a swimmer is strong, then it is better for the drowning individuals to be aware of this piece of information, of his talent, in order for them to cling on to him, resulting in him earning spiritual reward by saving their lives. Because some people, so some people can deal with fame, some can't. Some people, uh, fame gets to their heads and even a bit of attention gets to their heads really quickly and they can't uh, keep themselves grounded. Uh, other people are uh, different mentally, psychologically, uh, fame and attention may not corrupt them that easily. They can keep themselves grounded. Okay? So we have different personalities in how we react to attention. Some people just with a bit of attention, we they get big headed. Uh, it shows arrogance, etc. Uh, other people uh, may not be that uh, influenced by fame. So you have strong and weak uh, people uh, psychologically and spiritually when it comes to fame as well. Uh, there's a very long uh, story here, but we'll go through it because um, uh, the parable, the calamities of the activities performed for fame. Sayyidina Mansur ibn Ammar radiallahu ta'ala narrates, he narrates, um, so this is a story written in a book, Arabic book many hundreds of years ago. Uh, I had an Islamic brother who admired me deeply. He never abandoned me in times of sadness or happiness. He was someone that I believe to be an incredibly pious, devout man who frequently performed tahajjud and wept for Allah Almighty. However, following a few days uh, without seeing him, I learned that he had become extremely physically weak. After inquiring about his address, I reached his home and knocked on his door, which was opened by his daughter and entered with permission. Upon hearing his house, uh, entering his house, I noticed him lying on his bed in the middle of the room. He was in a terrible condition. His face had turned black, eyes blue and lips swollen. I extended some advice. My brother recited La ilaha illallah excessively. He barely opened his eyes to look at me after which he fainted. I advised the same again, but even the second time he barely managed to open his eyes before fainting again. When I encouraged him a third time to recite the kalima, he opened his eyes and remarked, Brother Mansur, there is a barrier between me and this kalima. I responded, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al Where are your salahs, your fasts, your tahajjud and your night prayers? Wistfully, he answered, My brother, all those deeds were not for the pleasure of Allah Almighty. In fact, I did them for fame, to gain public respect, for being the one who keeps fasting and performs salah and tahajjud. I wanted people to know that this person, he prays tahajjud, ibn tahajjud, guzara, etc. My remembrance of Allah Almighty was to impress the humans. I was extremely devout in the eyes of people, yet whilst alone, I used to close my door, strip naked, drink alcohol and challenge my Lord by disobeying him. This persisted for a long time, after which I became terminally ill with no hope of survival. I asked my daughter to bring the Holy Quran to me, which she did. I recited each letter of it. On reaching Surah Al Yasin, I raised the Quran and prayed in the court of Allah Almighty. O Allah Almighty, for the sake of this Holy Quran, please cure me. I will never sin again. Allah Almighty cured me. Following my recovery, I returned to my amusements, desires, and entertainment. The accursed devil made me forget the promise that I made to my Creator, Azawajal. Following that, I continued to commit sins for a long period of time. One day, all of a sudden, I was struck by the same illness again. Once again, I was at the doorstep of death. Just like before, I instructed my family to place me in the middle of the room and ask for the glorious Quran. After reciting it, I raised it high. O Allah Almighty, for the sake of the magnificence of this glorious Quran, please cure me from this ailment. 
Allah Almighty accepted my prayer and cured me once more, second time. Again, I returned to the fulfillment of my carnal desires and sins. Since then, I have been suffering from the same illness again till now. I asked my family to position me in the middle of this room one more time, as you can see for yourself at this very moment. When I asked for the glorious Quran again and tried to recite, I was unable to recite a single letter. I realized that Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty was terribly displeased with me. Raising my head to the sky, I implored, O oh Allah Almighty, for the sake of the glory of this blessed Quran, please relieve me from this disease. Then I heard these couplets of poetry from the unseen. The poetry meant something like this. Whenever you are sick, you repent from your sins, yet when you recover, you return to them. You cry while suffering, yet commit evil when you regain your strength. You encountered many calamities and adversities, yet Allah Almighty saved you from them all. Despite his prohibitions and admonitions, you remained engulfed in sins and neglected him for a long period of time. Were you not afraid of death? Despite having wisdom and intellect, you persistently sinned. You forgot about Allah's favors and bounties upon you. Never did you tremble or be afraid. On numerous occasions, you made promises to Allah Almighty, yet you broke them. You forgot everything ad ad admirable and praiseworthy. Before departing from this mortal world, know that your final destination is a grave and that it reminds you of the arrival of your death every moment of your life. Sayyidina Mansur ibn Ammar rahmatullahi remarked, I swear by Allah Almighty, I departed from him with tears pouring from my eyes, and before I reached my home, I gained news of my companion's death. We pray to Allah Almighty for a pleasant death, since many people who fasted and prayed during the nights died terrible deaths. So we have, have to always be uh, 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 concerned uh, and worried about the khufiyat tadbir of Allah Ta'ala. Okay? Um, so the Sufiyah say the pious, the God-fearing people will do nekiyah, will do good deeds and still be afraid. So Allah wale nekiyah karke darte hain, munafik gunah karke be khof rehte hain. Okay? So a Muslim should uh, do neki and um, still be afraid. Uh, hypocrites committing sins fearlessly and audaciously and boldly is a sign of hypocrisy, it's a sign of real hard heartedness. Uh, so the Prophet told in the Hadith uh, uh, um, avoid even the sins that people think are small, even they can destroy you. It's just like sometimes uh, if Allah wants, He can punish you for a minor sin and forgive you for a major sin. Um, we should consider every sin as a uh, as a major sin. Don't consider uh, a minor sin. Don't consider any sin to be small. So we've done a definition of uh, desiring fame. We've done a ayat a kalima, a hadith, a story, uh, as usual. And now we're going to do the six causes and cures for desiring fame. And number one, sometimes people are obsessed with becoming popular, which breeds a desire for fame. Okay, so popularity, the obsession with popularity is why we do things to get famous. The cure for this is for you to contemplate about stories uh, of pious people who took uh, madani precautions in order to avoid fame. So the Salaf Salihin, how they used to prefer, prefer anonymity over uh, attention. They would deliberately uh, avoid getting attention. Unless you know, you're getting attention is uh, um, um, good for the deen, beneficial for the deen beneficial for the people. Number two, sometimes your ego enough enjoys the pleasure derived from public compliments and therefore you endeavor to become as famous as you can in order to experience the short-term pleasure. So there's a certain nasha in compliments. There's a certain nasha, there's an intoxication in uh, praising, being liked, having people praise you. So that nasha is what makes us want to be famous. The cure for this is for you to frequently Contemplate about your flaws and ask your conscience, your zameer. The fire of these artificial compliments might just burn my flawed good deeds and transform them into ashes. Okay. Number three, sometimes you desire fame because you have a personality that enjoys being flattered. Okay. So liking flattery. Uh, you can cure this by distancing yourself from flatterers and adhering to the company of sincere individuals who will help you to identify your flaws with sincere intentions. Uh, we shouldn't flatter people, we shouldn't like flattery as well. A lot of the times our friend circles, if you look around this, our friend, um, look at the friend circles that people have, 
don't have specific friends don't make the reason for your friendship with people just because ye tareef karte hain they don't disagree with you a lot of our friend circles are just uh, a group of people who flatters bas ye tareef karte hain that's why they my best mates or they don't sort of disagree with me in any major way so uh, that that friend circle is not for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala is it uh, if our friendship is for uh, i'm I, i'm befriending this person because he's a pious person he reminds me of allah subhanahu wa taala that should be like the sole intention of wanting to be familiar with someone getting acquainted with someone so that you you banda he can teach me something in my deen or i can teach him something that is beneficial or he reminds me of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when i forget when i'm ghafil or even when i'm doing the zikr of allah he helps me to remember allah even more so these are the four or five intentions that we should have uh, not uh, these days we see our friend circle that just uh, our mates who flatter us Yeah, who've got like identical opinions to us, or who are as knowledgeable or as ignorant as we are. So they just, in one way, they like carbon copies of ourselves. So our friend circles, it's like we're just walking about with f- uh, these five mates that we have. We're just walking about with five mirrors that we like looking at, uh, looking at ourselves inside. These five people who've got the same ideas, same likes, same dislikes, uh, regardless of how uh, you know, they're as ignorant or as knowledgeable as us. So our friends in years behind. Uh, so don't flatter don't like being flattered don't just have a friend don't just call someone your best mate because he does your tarif take it don't just your 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 criteria for friendship shouldn't be that they flatter you uh, and especially if someone's flattering and sometimes we know that he's lying he's exaggerating praise then that's a lie that's haram false praise is haram to like false praise if you praise and you know it's false for you to enjoy it is haram as well so enjoying Uh, false praises we condemn in the Quran. Uh, we know that uh, we've read the ayat three or two or three times that the Jews they used to be like called scholars when they weren't scholars. So Allah Taala condemns them in the Quran. Shee they like to be praised for things that they don't do. So juti tarif pasand karna ye bhi haram hai katayi. So na khud juti tarif kare na pasand kare. These days everyone exaggerates everything. Even when people are praising you, they're exaggerating. Even when they're criticizing you, they're exaggerating. So you've got to figure out the truth. how much of that praise or that criticism is true and how much of it is false you got to use your own aql uh, with the tawfiq of allah tbaraka wa ta'ala you got educate yourself and uh, build up your experience so you know how much of the praise is true or false number 4 sometimes uh, sometimes the desire to attain unlawful benefits leads to desiring fame the cure for this is for you to stop searching for discrete routes and shortcuts to success rather you ought to place your trust in allah almighty and attempt to gain success through hard work uh yeah uh, knowing people fame uh, talukat uh, we use talukat uh, as a shortcut to success don't we okay so rather than uh, using your talukat and your bradri and fame and popularity build up your own uh, talent your own uh, skills make yourself worthy of uh, rather than you flattering other people other people are uh, pulled in towards you drawn towards you because of your talents okay um and that you you climb the ladder of success based on your talents uh, not just based on flattery false praise and who your connections are uh, one day or another is going to be revealed uh, that you're not as talented as you you shouldn't even be in that position you don't even deserve to be there so it should be talent that gets us uh, uh, on the top of the the ladder of success not flattery false praise and talukat number 5 Uh, sometimes <clears throat> desiring fame is an avenue for concealing personal flaws and faults this can be cured by convincing yourself that if i try this hard to convert, convert my flaws into strengths then i will prosper in the sight of allah almighty and encounter a blissful afterlife uh, too yes yeah, so all of the uh, mehnat that i'm doing in trying to become famous was sari mehnat if i just diverted that to Uh, removing my weaknesses and becoming talented then i would gain the pleasure of allah taala okay so uh, divert all your uh, your efforts we making a lot of efforts in these days to do uh, haram things all we need to divert uh, those efforts to the halal uh, and it would be a different story number 6 sometimes the desire for fame is a strategy to easily deceive and cheat people The cure for this is to inculcate sympathy for the welfare of Muslims inside your heart whilst contemplating about the possible damage you could encounter in the hereafter 
as a result of these short term uh, benefits. Okay. Uh, so desiring fame can be a strategy to deceive and cheat people. If you had true concern and sympathy and love for the ummah, you wouldn't want to cheat people, you wouldn't want to deceive people. Uh, and hence you wouldn't then use fame as a tool or an avenue to do that. So these are six and there could be more. There could be more. The more we study, um, this book is not necessarily saying that there's only, only six causes and only six cures for designing fame. There's other things uh, as well. So that's our eighth uh, chapter done. So we have done uh, desire, uh, the greed for fame and previously we've done the desire for popularity and the desire for compliments, all similar chapters we've done uh, before as well. And it's an important thing because um, sincerity, you know, the opposite of seeking fame is sincerity, isn't it? And we've already said that sincerity, without sincerity, the ibadat are not accepted. Uh, without sincerity, nothing is accepted. So uh, sincerity is doing something solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala and not being concerned with what people are thinking of us uh, or fame. Any questions on this? Inshallah. There were a few questions that the brothers put on the groups. Uh, I did send some answers. Um, one or two questions that I've not answered yet, inshallah. Uh, we'll discuss those as well when I look into uh, a bit more. Any general questions? We've got 10 minutes. Any general questions about anything you guys want to talk about with the previous things? No. <laughs> Stuck in there. Masallah. Assalamu alaikum. 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 Disbelievers are the enemies of Allah Ta'ala. Kuffar are the enemies of Allah Ta'ala. Uh, if um, you, you don't give something valuable to an enemy. Um, and so the hadith is saying that uh, the value of the dunya is less than a mosquito's wing in the sight of Allah Ta'ala. If it was valuable, you wouldn't give any dunya to uh, non Muslims. And because there, there is enemies, so you wouldn't give the kuffar the enemies of Allah Ta'ala. But the fact that he's given the kuffar millions of pounds and billions of pounds of kuffar or millionaires and billionaires shows that being a billionaire isn't a sign of the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. So anything that a kafir has is not uh, uh, because kafirs are not the friends of Allah Ta'ala. So if Allah Ta'ala gives them anything, it can't be a proof of the friendship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So anything that they have can't be a proof of that thing being valuable. Um, Brother Ajwad, who's not here today, but he did put on the group yeah, last week, uh, not last week, sorry, Wednesday, we were talking about what was our topic, it was the dunya, wasn't it? And he did say at the end of the class, that it seems like it's difficult to act on these things, it's difficult to be sincere, it's difficult to know what we're studying. Fame, mukhlisona, it seems like it's very difficult, the dunya say, uh, you know, avoiding, uh, chasing the dunya seems very difficult. These are obviously... Um, and these are things that are haram and not damage our deen. So we have to study these 47 diseases uh, of the heart. And they have opposites. So we, the, the opposite of deciding fame is anonymity, wanting to be unknown. Uh, but that's a ch topic on its own. At the moment, we're just studying the negative things, the viruses. We're not really focusing too much. We're only touching on with what is the opposite. That's a different book. That's a different book. What are the things that we... Uh, should be the characteristics that we should have. This book is on what we shouldn't have in our hearts. That's a different book. What we should have: sincerity, uh, humility, tawazu, yeah. uh, uh, trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, love and compassion. So that's a different 
subject. But it, it, you know, as far as Adurbai's uh, question, that um, it seems difficult. Um, it's not uh, difficult because Allah Taala has commanded us. He wouldn't command us something which is beyond our capacity. Okay, so it's for us for us to try to avoid these gunas. If it seems hard for us, it's just because of the social conditioning and since our childhood, the environment that we brought up with. I've said repeatedly that in our Asian community, we're very competitive and it's all about the dunya. So since the age of five, we've just been taught to worry about. Uh, we see our elders, our own parents saying, what are people going to say? So from the age of five, seven, we've just been uh, it's drilled in. It's almost like it's in our DNA to want fame and to um to want people to talk about us and uh, sincerity seems to be like what's the word uh, unicorn it seems to be like uh, the most rare thing uh we wouldn't know sincerity we wouldn't know sincere person if you even if you were sat in front of us we wouldn't know since we don't know what it feels like uh, because over the past 40 50 years not even 40 50 years the past few centuries just generally showing off um, the love of the dunya is the root of all even behind all of this fame and behind all of this fame seeking behind all of the dunya seeking uh, it's just uh, I have to have mal or I have to have fame to have izzat to be respected or uh, to have wealth so I can live com comfortably so at the root of that, to cure all that, tawakkul is the key. Tawakkul and trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the key to all of this. When you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with your dunya, um, uh, when, when you trust Allah azza wa jal, uh, He opens, or when you have trust and tawakkul, uh, trust and taqwa, when you have trust and taqwa, Allah Park opens up doors for you that you didn't know, even know existed. He'll open up for risk, etc. When you don't have a tawakkul and you don't trust Allah Ta'ala, then He leaves you to the people. He leaves you to asbab and your means and your own efforts. So He leaves you to the people. Okay, so tawakkul is uh, in the, the root, in the, the main uh, solution to uprooting you know, the love of the dunya, the love of dunya, which leads to the love of, of fame, the love of attention, etc. We have already touched on this, that ikhlas is the most you know, difficult thing. Difficult thing because there's nothing in the nafs, there's nothing in the base itself. Uh, doing something without wanting attention uh, is very difficult. Very easy to say, but very difficult to uh, do. Very difficult to do. Um, and we did say once before, we'll try to do at least one thing that, you know, we take to our graves that we don't, at least one nek amal that we don't even tell our parents, our best friends, our children, our wives, take it to the grave, don't even tell anyone before you die. Yeah. Imam Zain al Abidin used to give sadaqah to people and uh, no one, he used to just give sadaqah in Russian uh, food, he used to drop it off at people's homes, poor people's homes, and they didn't, even know, they didn't even know who it was coming from, who was giving this sadaqah. And it was only after they died that they realized that it really must have been him because when he, Imam Zain al Abidin, when he died, uh, that food stopped going to the poor people's home. So they realized that it must have been him. Uh, so even he didn't reveal it before he passed away. They just assumed that he must have been the per person doing that sadaqah. So try to take uh, at least one good deed to our graves that no one absolutely knows about. That we don't reveal it today, we don't reveal it in 10 years' time, 50 years' time. And uh, in fact, the best way to Take something to your grave is to forget it yourself. Forget yourself that you've uh, actually done it. Um, but ikhlas is uh, as important as it is. Uh, it's sadly neglected to the same extent. It's absolutely crucial. Nothing we do is going to benefit spiritually or get us any so without ikhlas. But at the same time, it's so uh, uh, neglected to, you know, uh, uh, a really sad and disturbing, dis uh, uh, disappointing level. Uh, we actually promote, we happily promote showing off, we happily promote arrogance, 
uh, we happily uh, yeah promote uh, showing off uh, in the name of encouragement, in the name of uh, appreciation. It's good to appreciate people. I said this before. Uh, a one day old baby uh, up until the 100 year old man old man need appreciation so appreciate people that work with you that work for you that you work for that work with you appreciate them but uh, appreciation is one thing uh, showing off and wanting attention and fame uh, all the time in the name of appreciation well uh, you're not appreciating me okay um so sometimes the sadaqah that we announce in masjids as well, calling people's names out. Uh, it depends on the person, the individual's intention, uh, but calling someone's name and saying, well, you have to appreciate them, appreciate, well, you have to really focus on whether you're really appreciating them or if there's a showing off sort of thing going on. So it's sad that uh, showing off is uh, promoted arrogance is promoted in our community is almost like it's in our DNA and that showing off is fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. We just we don't call it showing off. We call it appreciating or encouragement or something. Uh, and ikhlas is a topic that um, it's like uh, been abandoned in our masajid in our communities and sincerity. Uh, theme. And uh, when we hear these kind of when we read these kind of things, we think this is. Funny, this is something we can't do. It is doable. It is doable. Everything in that book is doable. Everything in front of us is doable. If it wasn't, there would be no point in us. Uh, this class isn't about just studying stories about the past saints. It's about doing what is in that book. So it's all doable. Uh, if it seems funny to us or if it seems far-fetched, well, that's not because this is far from the deen. It's because we are far from the deen. Do you remember that saying of Hazrat Hassan Basri? He said, if the Sahaba were here today, they think you were kafirs. And if you saw the Sahaba, you'd think they were mad. If the Sahaba were here today, you would think that they are crazy people. But looking at their attitude and their ishq and their ma'rifat, their behavior, you'd think these people are crazy. And if they saw you, they'd think you were kafirs. They'd think the way we behave, we behave as though we don't even believe in an afterlife. The majority of Muslims behave as though they don't believe in the akhirat. So they will think that you're kafirs. They will think these people don't even believe. They're acting as though they don't believe in the afterlife. A very profound and powerful statement. Um, um, Allah's brothers written that as well. If the Sahaba uh, were here, if you saw them, you'd think they were crazy. They'd think you were kafirs. Uh, and one of the signs of Qiyamah is knowledge will become ignorance. Ignorance will become knowledge. Sunnat will become Biddat, Biddat will become Sunnat. That's how far people will be. Uh, liars will be trusted, trustworthy people will be accused of being liars. Honest people will be slandered, dishonest people will be called honest. So, you know, the closer we get to Qiyamah, everything's like just, what's the word, dis, uh, disbalanced or uh, uh, unbalanced, is just an uh, imbalance in everything. Uh, so, but this is doable, it's, uh, and it still is for us even in this day and age. Whatever is inside the book, whatever we're studying is doable, and we have to do mujahada. We have to help each other uh, to act upon it, and we have to strive to act upon it. Uh, but the best way of acting upon it, uh, we had those four, uh, those four tips at the beginning of the book um, on page. Uh, 22 and 23, uh, four remedies, four ways, to page 22 and 23. Uh, number one, the company of a perfect sheikh. Number two, befriending a, relig a religious friend who's on the same page as you, who's also trying to avoid these things. And number three, use your enemy's insults. And number four, uh, just being observant of your community because whatever flaws your community has, you've been brought up in the same community. So there's a good chance if you see something wrong, there's a good chance you're doing it as well, but you're just not aware of it. Um, so we can, uh, everything in this book is doable. If it seems far-fetched, it's because for the past 40 years, no one's taught us. People have stopped talking about it. Uh, why? That's a different kind of worms. Why are we Islamic education? This is Islamic education. This is for Islamic education. Why for Islamic education has not been imparted to us? 
uh, for the past 40 years or for, for the past few centuries. There have always been scholars writing on these topics. There have always been Sufi are talking about these things, but the majority have always been ignorant. So there's nothing new in there. It's all going back to the time of the Prophet So May Allah Pak give us ikhlas, me ikhlas as well, and uh, us all. Um, yeah, so the purpose of these lessons, I said the first day as well, it's not just uh, fancy quotes, Sufi quotes. Yeah, so you, all you got to do is type in Sufi quote on Google and you'll get a billion quotes. And you type in images at the top and you get some nice pictures with them as well. And just putting these Sufi quotes on our profile pics on Facebook, on TikTok, whatever. Uh, remember the Sufi I said, don't be someone who just gathers the quotes of the Hukama, but act like the Juhala. Don't be those who you just gather the quotes of the wise people, but you act like idiots and fools. So that's not the purpose. If that's our intention, uh, that's not my intention just to um, give nice, wise quotes. You can do that more than that. You don't need me uh, for nice uh, quotes. You don't need Alim for quotes. But the Amalita will be trying to act upon those things, inshallah, uh, that it is doable. Everything inside this book is doable, even in 2024, even in UK, uh, it is doable. Uh, our community makes it very hard, but as long as you're uh, around people and you're in an environment with like-minded people who believe this is doable and who want to do that, you can clean your heart, even in this day and age. Right. Jazakallah for your time and your attention and your sabr. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أستغفر الله جزاك الله خير. I'll see you on Tuesday.